Growing up, the Transformers were always something that fascinated me. I watched a few of the shows and collected some of the toys, but that was about it. Well, when I got into comics, a lot of my friends and fans just would not shut up about the Transformers books from IDW Comics, and they did seem like a lot of fun. But wow, there are just so many of them and they are incredibly intimidating to jump into. That being said though, I went through the same thing earlier with the Power Rangers comic series, and when I gave them a chance, I ended up really falling in love with them. You can see my previous video for more information. But where do I start? Well, luckily for me, IDW seems to understand just how complicated their lore has gotten, and they released this handy reading guide for newcomers like me. So I guess the best place to start would be Transformers Infiltration, the very first book in the series. But before I jump into that, I want to quickly give a shout out to our very topical sponsor, World of Warships Legends and their new Transformers crossover. World of Warships is a free-to-play, free-to-win action MMO featuring World War I and II naval battles. With cross-play support, amazing graphics, sound, and control, this is the premier naval battling experience. There's a variety of ship types, nations, and other features, making it to where there's multiple ways to play the game. And with the addition of new Transformers-inspired ships and commanders, there's even more. Dude, the Transformers stuff seems super exciting, with Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Megatron, and Rumble joining the fray as unique skins, complete with special animations and recognizable voiceovers. Look, don't you want to play as Optimus Prime driving a boat? It's completely absurd, and I love it. First-time players that use my link will get the Aurora Premium ship, three days of a premium account, and 75,000 credits to get you started. I'm actually filming this before they give me the special invite code, but I swear that it's a good one. It's... So make sure you give it a whirl while supporting the channel. But anyway, back to the video. Released in 2005, Transformers Infiltration is a seven-issue miniseries that's not just the beginning of the IDW Transformers universe, but also IDW's entire Hasbro universe, which ran for 13 years. Artist E.J. Sue is most well-known for his time here on Transformers, and the bulk of his other work is on comic adaptations of established properties like Castlevania and Astro Boy. But he's also done some work for one of my favorite comic writers, Robert Kirkman, for his Tech Jacket and Super Patriot series, both of which take place in the same universe as my favorite comic series of all time, Invincible. As for the writing, that was handled by Simon Furman, who is synonymous with Transformers. You see, this series with IDW Comics is not the first time that the Transformers have had comics. Previously, Marvel had the rights, and Furman wrote the Transformers comics for Marvel UK and the bulk of them for the US publication. One fun fact that I found while researching this is that while handling the UK Transformers series, Furman was the writer and co-creator of a character named Death's Head who was initially a side character in the Transformers books, but in order to avoid Hasbro claiming ownership of the character, Furman created a quick one-page comic that featured Death's Head so that he could become an official Marvel character. Anyway, Marvel eventually lost the rights to make the Transformers comics, and they were picked up by the now-defunct Dreamwave Productions. Simon Furman was brought in to help with these new comics, but when that eventually fizzled out, and when IDW got their turn to give the property a spin, they basically had to bring Furman in as well because he's been involved with so much of this franchise. However, this would be the first time that Furman would be able to write a Transformers universe from the very beginning, and he ended up writing a lot of this new one for IDW. But hey, that's the production history, what about the book itself? We start off by focusing on a pickpocket named Verity Carlo, who steals a Palm computer while riding a bus. This thing was considered to be extremely high-tech at the time. I mean, remember, this was 2005. After getting off the bus with her score, Verity manages to hitch a ride with a dude named Hunter Oniren. He runs a conspiracy site called Mechatopia.com, and he's trying to find alien robots that he has convinced are roaming the Earth in disguise. Quick side note, Mechatopia.com was a real website that was run and maintained by IDW Comics in order to promote this book. However, in the years following, they've let this domain lapse, and now some asshole has brought it up and is using it for their own means. What kind of jerk would do that? Wink wink. Anyway, it turns out that the guy that Verity stole from was a member of a mysterious organization called the Machination, and he had uncovered a lot of information about a Decepticon group led by Starscream, including the location of one of their abandoned bases. All of this information was on the computer stolen by Verity, and the Decepticons are desperate to get their hands on it before it can fall into the Autobots' hands. A group of Decepticons managed to track the computer down, nearly killing the humans until they're saved by an Autobot, an ambulance named Ratchet. After revealing himself as a Transformer, we get treated to a fun death race kind of battle with Ratchet racing against two cars on the ground and a jet above him all at the same time. 
The group barely manages to get away, but with Ratchet in desperate need of repairs, they go to one of Verity's friends, a mechanic named Jimmy Pink. Though pretty much as soon as the repairs are done, the Decepticons were able to find our heroes and we get another death race. Ratchet notes that the Decepticons are normally pretty secretive, and being so open with their attacks and even being willing to partially transform is highly unusual. You see, the Decepticons have a six-phase infiltration protocol, which is a massive deal, and the fact that these guys are willing to break the standard procedure means that something is clearly up. But just as Ratchet and the humans were going to be toast, Autobot reinforcements show up and save the day. But they are not happy with Ratchet being so brazen by revealing himself to the humans. Regardless, they all return to base and analyze the data on the computer that Verity stole. When they learn about the abandoned Decepticon base, the humans manage to convince Ratchet to further defy his superiors and let them go investigate it. Oh, and also Bumblebee decides to tag along as well. Meanwhile, Starscream orders his goons to destroy that old base, not knowing that the humans and Autobots were planning on investigating it. And speaking of, the humans really don't find much, just a few dead bodies and freaking Megatron who has come to Earth in order to confront his subordinates about breaking the infiltration protocol. Not knowing that Megatron was there, the Decepticons bomb the base, and this seriously pisses him off. Megatron goes on an absolute rampage against the traitors, and he is absolutely terrifying. Megatron survives some massive attacks without a single scratch on him, and he one-shots his forces. This scene does a great job in setting up just how powerful he is as an enemy, and it really sets the stakes. After making short work of the Decepticons, Megatron departs to go confront the backstabbing Starscream, and the Autobots, being caught in the middle of this civil war, follow suit in order to contain the battle if it got out of hand. When confronted by their leader, the rest of Starscream's cronies step down, but since he's recently beefed himself up Dragon Ball Z style with a powerful mineral called Ore 13, Starscream opts to take on Megatron all by himself. Now, that was a bad idea, because even with this power-up, Starscream posed zero threat and paid a fatal price. With his former general lying there dead on the ground, Megatron looks up at the Autobots who are just kind of waiting there and simply says to them, Phase 2 opting to not engage with them on that day. With Ore 13 now discovered, Earth has become the new battlefield between the two opposing Transformers forces, and the book ends with the arrival of the Autobots' big gun, Optimus Prime. Honestly, I thought this book was just alright. It was just a lot of setup, and the most interesting things that it had to offer didn't really happen until the very end. The beginning of the book was pretty much one large chase scene, and while the action was nice, it was kind of boring. Based on just this miniseries, I probably wouldn't opt to read more of the Transformers comics, but since friends and fans swear that the series gets so freaking great, maybe I'll keep going, especially if this video does well, and if there's demand for more of these in the comments. Now, that being said, there are aspects that I did enjoy. For example, the book really focuses on the disguise aspect of the Transformers, which in my limited exposure to the franchise is something that I feel is often overlooked. And I also have to give one more mention to how cool that initial fight scene with Megatron was. He really comes across as legitimately intimidating, and I'm curious to see how the Autobots choose to engage him in future comics. But honestly, there's more to this book than I got into in this video. I mean, any video isn't going to do a comic justice, and there's no substitute for actually reading the story for yourself. So if you're interested in checking it out, I actually have links to both the physical and digital versions down there in the description below. Buying it through my link does help out the channel, so if you're interested, you know, I'd appreciate it. But if you like this video, then why not consider subscribing or even watching another one? And I mentioned it at the very beginning of this, but I had a very similar experience with the Power Rangers comics, so if you're wanting to see my thoughts on those, you know, maybe go check out my videos there. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully I'll see you next time.